Shabbat Shalom, everyone. We're gathered together today on the 23rd of the second month, which happens to be the 6th of May, 2023, on the Gregorian calendar. And we are continuing with our reading and study of the book of Hanok, or First Enoch, as it is known. We have gone through chapters 1 through 82, and the last 10 chapters or so have covered the, the luminaries, how the sun, moon, and stars are supposed to work in relation to one another for our reckoning of time. Now, we, we've gone over there in detail the fact that the moon information is abrogated or there's an abridged version in the current translations that we have available. We've covered a little bit about what the Dead Sea Scrolls share on that. We'll get to those more as we're able to when we're reading through chron chronologically all of the writings as uh, as we get to them. But now we're going to be covering what's called the visions of Hanok, where he had first a vision of the flood, and then he had a vision from the creation all the way through to the advent of our Mashiach. So, Ab willing... Those will be edifying. You might learn some things that you haven't known before, or see some connections that uh, you might not have been familiar with. But without further ado, we'll go ahead and get started. This is chapter 83. He says, And now, <clears throat> my son Methuselah, I will show you all my visions which I have seen, recounting them before you. Two visions I saw before I took a wife, and one was quite unlike the other. The first when I was learning to write, the second before I took your mother, I saw a terrible vision, and regarding them I prayed to Yahuwah. I had laid down, or I had laid me down in the house of my grandfather, Mahalalel, when I saw in a vision how the Shamayim collapsed and was borne off and fell to the earth. And when it fell to the earth, I saw how the earth was swallowed up in a great abyss, and mountains were suspended on mountains, and hills sank down on hills, and high trees were rent from their stems, and hurled down and sunk in the abyss. And thereupon a word fell into my mouth, and I lifted up my voice to cry aloud, and said, The earth is destroyed. And my grandfather Mahalalel walked or waked me as I lay near him, and said unto me, Why do you cry so, my son? And why do you make such lamentation? I recounted to him the whole vision which I had seen. And he said unto me, A terrible thing have you seen, my son, and of grave moment is your dream vision as to the secrets of all the sin of the earth. It must sink into the abyss and be destroyed with a great destruction. And now, my son, arise and make petition to Yahuwah of esteem, since you are a believer, that a remnant may remain on the earth, and that he may not destroy the whole earth. My son, from Shemaim all this will come upon the earth, and upon the earth there will be great destruction." After that, I arose and prayed and implored and besought and wrote down my prayer for the generations of the world. And I will show you, or and I will show everything to you, my son Methuselah. And when I had gone forth below and seen the Shemaim and the sun rising in the east and the moon setting in the west and a few stars and the whole earth, and everything as he had known it from the beginning, or sorry, as he had known it in the beginning, then I Baruch, or blessed Yahuwah of judgment, 
and extolled him because he had made the sun go forth from the windows of the east. And he ascended and rose on the face of the Shamayim, and set out and kept traversing the path shown unto him. Chapter 84 And I lifted up my hands in righteousness, and Barak, or blessed, the Kadosh and Great One, and spake with the breath of my mouth, and with the tongue of flesh, which Elohim has made for the children of the flesh of men, that they should speak therewith. And he gave them breath and a tongue, and a mouth that they should speak therewith. Baruch be you, Yahuwah, King, great and mighty in your greatness, master of the whole creation of the Shemaim, king of kings and El of the whole world. Your power and kingship and greatness abide forever and ever, and throughout all generations your dominion. And all the Shemaim are your throne forever, and the whole earth your footstool forever and ever. For you have made, and you rule all things, and nothing is too hard for you. Hokma or wisdom, departs not from the place of your throne, nor turns away from your presence. And you know and see and hear everything, and there is nothing hidden from you, for you see everything. And now the messengers of your Shemaim are guilty of trespass. And upon the flesh of men abides your wrath until the great day of judgment. <clears throat> and now, Elohim and Master and Great King, I implore and beseech you to fulfill my prayer to leave me a posterity on earth, and not to destroy all the flesh of man, and make the earth without inhabitant, so that there should be an eternal destruction. And now, my master, destroy from the earth the flesh which has aroused your wrath, but the flesh of righteousness and uprightness establish as a plant of the eternal seed, and hide not your face from the prayer of your servant, Yahuwah. Now, that, that's the first mention. We're going to see it in, like, Noah prays after the flood for his children. Abraham prays for his children. And you can see the prayers of the righteous are effective. They are meaningful and they actually are answered and, and given what they believe and ask for. It says, and after this, I saw another dream and I will show the whole dream to you, my son. And this is what they call the animal apocalypse. Okay. And Hanok lifted up his voice and spake to his son, Methuselah. To you, my son, will I speak. Hear my words. Incline your ear to the dream vision of your father. Before I took your mother, Edna, I saw in a vision on my bed, and behold, a bull came forth from the earth, and that bull was white, and after it came forth a heifer, and along with this came forth two bulls, one of them black and the other red. And that black bull gored the red one and pursued him over the earth, and thereupon I could no longer see that red bull. All right. Now, if you remember from the book of Han or the book of Yobelim, Adam and his wife Hua had two sons and a daughter. And then Cain rose up against Havel or Abel and killed him and then took his daughter and married her. This is what you're reading right here. Okay. It says, but that black bull grew and that heifer went with him. And I saw that many oxen proceeded from him, which resembled and followed him. 
meaning they were black bulls. And that cow, the first one, went from the presence of that first bull in order to seek the red one, but found him not and lamented with a great lamentation over him and sought him. This is Hua leaving Adam and looking for her son and then mourning for him, right? And I looked till that first bull came to her and quieted her. And from that time onward, she cried no more. And after that, she bore another white bull. And after him, she bore many bulls and black cows. And I saw in my sleep that white bull likewise grow and become a great white bull. And from him proceeded many white bulls, and they resembled him. And they began to begat many white bulls, which resembled them, one following the other, many. That would have been there after they stopped mourning. When they were 130, they had Set, which was appointed instead of Abel, right? And then from him, they, they also had more sons and daughters, a total of 12 sons. And Seth also had many children. And then from him proceeded all the righteous, right? And again I saw with mine eyes as I slept, and I saw the Shamayim above, and behold, a star fell from Shamayim, and it arose and ate and pastured amongst those oxen. And after that I saw a large and black oxen, or I saw the large and the black oxen, and behold, they all changed their stalls and pastures and their cattle and began to live with each other. And again, I saw in the vision and looked towards the Shemaim. And behold, I saw many stars descend and cast themselves down from Shemaim to that first star. And they became bulls amongst those cattle and pastured them, or with them, amongst them. Now, that first one, I don't know exactly which messenger that would have been, but it seems that one came first and then more came down. But this would have been the watchers that came to teach men righteousness that actually went apostate, right? And I looked at them and saw, and behold, they all let out their privy members, like horses, and began to cover the cows of the oxen. It should say covet, right? And they began, and they all became pregnant and bare elephants, camels, and donkeys. So this was the, the watchers mating with the women. They took 200 of them. They changed their shapes. And then they had, at first, the, the giants that were called the Nephilim, right? or what we would know as the Titans, the very large ones that were the firstborn from the Watchers. And then their offspring were, were smaller, which they equate as the camels, and their offspring were even smaller, which they equate as the donkeys. The three types of the offspring of the Nephilim, though, or what the scriptures call the Raphidim, right, the giants, they're enumerated in the book of Yobelim as well. It says, And all the oxen feared them and were affrighted at them and began to bite with their teeth and to devour and to gore with their horns. And they began moreover to devour those oxen. And behold, all the children of the earth began to tremble and quake before them and to flee from them. Chapter 87 And again I saw how they began to gore each other, and to devour each other, and the earth began to cry aloud. And I raised mine eyes again to Shemaim, and I saw in the vision, and behold, there came forth from Shemaim, beings who were like white men, and four went forth from that place, and three with them. 
meaning the seven messengers that are before the throne of our creator, right? Mikael and those that are with him, the chief messengers. This is the, uh, the part that was mentioned between chapters 10 through 16 earlier, where they see the, the cries of the outcries of men from the Shemaim, and they petition the father, and then the father tells him what to do, right? And he sends them out to go do the things that he said, binding up the messengers and sending a sword between their children and whatnot, right? But continuing, it says, and those three that had last come forth grasped me by my hand and took me up away from the generations of the earth and raised me up to a lofty place and showed me a tower raised high above the earth and all the hills were lower. And one of them said unto me, Remain here till you see everything that befalls those elephants, camels, and donkeys, and the stars, and the oxen, and all of them. Chapter 88 And I saw one of those four who had come forth first, and he seized that first star which had fallen from the Shemaim, and bound it hand and foot, and cast it into an abyss. Now that abyss was narrow and deep, and horrible and dark. So the first one that came down might be Shamyaza, who was the leader of the 200. Because he was the first to be judged, and they were all bound in the earth, and sharp rocks put over them. And they're currently there suffering even till today, until the until their judgment where they're going to be found guilty and thrown into the lake of fire. This is he sees the first star which had fallen from the Shamayim and bound it hand and foot and cast it into an abyss. Now that abyss was narrow and deep and horrible and dark. And one of them drew a sword and gave it to those elephants and camels and donkeys. Then they began to smite each other, and the whole earth quaked because of them. And as I was beholding in the vision, behold, or lo, one of those four who had come forth stoned from Shemaim and gathered and took all the great stars whose privy members were like those of horses, and bound them all hand and foot, and cast them in an abyss of the earth. Chapter 89 And one of those four went to that white bull, and instructed him in a secret, without his being terrified. He was born a bull, and became a man, and built for himself a great vessel, and dwelt thereon. And three bulls dwelt with him in that vessel, and they were they were covered in. So pretty simple. Noah built the ark, and his three sons were with him, right? And again I raised mine eyes towards Shemaim and saw a lofty roof with seven water torrents thereon. And those torrents flowed with much water into an enclosure which is inside the firmament. You'll see that a little more clearly in just a moment. And I saw again, and behold, fountains were opened on the surface of that great enclosure, meaning the, the, the world, right? The earth is a plane. The firmament over it is like a dome, and it's the enclosure that was filling with water. The floodgates of the, the, the windows of the heavens, they call them, the seven openings or portals in the firmament were opened up. The seven abysses were opened up and water filled up from top and bottom. This is, and that water began to swell and rise upon the surface, and I saw that enclosure till all its surface was covered with water. And the water, the darkness, and mist increased upon it. And as I looked at the height of that water, 
that water had risen above the height of that enclosure and was streaming over that enclosure, and it stood upon the earth. And all the cattle of that enclosure were gathered together until I saw how they sank and were swallowed up and perished in that water. But that vessel floated on the water, while all the oxen and elephants and camels and donkeys sank to the bottom with all the animals, so that I could no longer see them, and they were not able to escape, but perished and sank into the depths. And again I saw in the vision till those water torrents were removed from that high roof, and the chasms of the earth were leveled up, and other abysses were opened. Then the water began to run down into these, till the earth became visible, but that vessel settled on the earth, and the darkness retired, and light appeared. But that white bull, which had become a man, came out of that vessel, and the three bulls with him, and one of those three was white like that bull, and one of them was red as blood, and one black, and that white bull departed from them. And now this is from the death of Noach to the Exodus. And they began to bring forth beasts of the field and birds, so that there arose different genera, lions, tigers, wolves, dogs, hyenas, wild boars, foxes, squirrels, swine, falcons, vultures, kites, eagles, and ravens. And among them was born a white bull. Now, this is all the peoples and the different types. This is where, in the Renewed Covenant writings, they get the illusion or the people mistakenly think of the Gentiles as wild beasts or animals because of the animal apocalypse here and a few other things. The dietary laws in particular with the explanations given in the letter, the epistle of Barnabas and the letter of Aristes, for example, the animals were equated to character types that we are not to emulate. The people, however, when, when they saw men acting like that, would equate them to animals and consider them unclean and wouldn't even go near them. So they went beyond the intention of what he was trying to teach there with what they were doing. And that was why Ketha had the vision with the unclean animals coming down and he says, slay and eat. He said, by no means, I've never had anything common or unclean pass through my mouth. And he said, what I've made clean, you don't call common or unclean but he was talking about men, right? So this is where they get that from. All the people born after the flood and then born amongst them was Abraham, the white bull. Verse 11, And they began to bite one another, but that white bull which was born amongst them begat a wild donkey, Yishmael, and a white bull with it, and the wild donkeys multiplied. This would be the Ishmaelim, right? And if you remember, I told you about the parable. The first covenant believers were equated to donkeys and horses, like a wild or a stubborn horse in the wilderness or a wild donkey in the promontory. They won't listen without bit and bridle, without being steered and corrected and poked and prodded. There's no willing obedience to them. And that was what was equated here in the first covenant believers. It says, but that bull which was born from him begat a black wild boar, Esau, who's called a wild boar of a man by his brother in Yobelim when he's attacking him. And a white sheep, which is Yaakov. And the former begat many boars, but that sheep begat twelve sheep. 
And when those 12 sheep had grown, they gave up one of them to the donkeys, and those donkeys again gave up that sheep to the wolves. And that sheep grew up among the wolves, which now you can see the illusions of what's, ob willing, there's more parables here that are, are starting to pop up to you. But the, the, the wild boar is Edom, okay? The donkeys or the wild asses are Yishmael, whom Yahusuf was sold into slavery to them, who sold them to the Mitzrayim or the Egyptians, which are called wolves right here. And Yahuwah brought the 11 sheep to live with it and to pasture with it among the wolves, and they multiplied and became many flocks of sheep. And the wolves began to fear for them. I'm sorry, to fear them. And they oppressed them until they destroyed their little ones. And they cast their young into the river of much water. But those sheep began to cry aloud on account of their little ones and to complain unto their Yahuwah or their master. Now, in between this time, from the time they went into Mitzrayim until they were being persecuted here, you you had at least 70 years where Yahusuf reigned and they were in Shalom. He was prospering and they were growing. During that time, not all the children stayed in Mitzrayim. Some of them were leaving beforehand to found different Greek city-states, in particular the sons of Zerah, of the sons of Yahuda from Tamar, were going off to, to have their own places to reign as, as it was foretold to them. One of the places right before the little ones were killed, the people who had not mixed with the idolatry of the Egyptians or Mitzrayim left, were protected by Yahuwah, and they founded eventually the city of Troy. But there were other Hebrews that had founded Attica, Athens, the, what became the Spartan kingdom or the Lacedaemonians, and possibly others, Calcol or Colchis as well. So just for context, while that was happening, there was other places popping up where they were already migrating and leaving. This is, and a sheep which had been saved from the wolves fled and escaped to the wild donkeys. He went to Midian, if you remember. Midian was a son of Yishmael, who happened to be killed by one of them. Midian himself was killed by Ammon, if, if I remember right. But they um, they are all related. And if you recall, the Yishmaelim, eventually they became known as the Nebetin. The Nebetins was the predominant tribe, which was one of the sons of Yishmael. And they were known as that for a long, long time until Islam became very prominent, or even after then. But after they mixed, if you remember the sons of Keturah, the sons of Yishmael, and the um, the sons of Edom all intermarried, and they had intermarried with daughters from Mitzrayim, and they became known as the mixed people or the Arabs, which is it means mixture. Same word we have for Erev, for evening, which is mixture. This is, and the sheep which had been saved from the wolves fled and escaped to the wild donkeys. And I saw the sheep, how they lamented and cried and besought their Yahuwah with all their might, till that master or Yahuwah of the sheep descended at the voice of the sheep from a lofty abode and came to them and pastured them. And he called that sheep which had escaped the wolves and spake with it concerning the wolves, that it should admonish them not to touch the sheep. And the sheep went to the wolves according to the word of Yahuwah, and another sheep met with it and went with it. And the two went and entered together into the assembly of those wolves and spake with them and admonished them not to touch the sheep from henceforth. 
this could have been what Moshe was familiar with when he said, don't, don't they know I'm, I was raised up to be the deliverer of Yisrael, right? This could have been what he was familiar with when he was reading or when he was asking for Yahuwah to send by the hand of whom he would send. And then he called for his brother to go with him. We don't know for sure, but we do know that these writings were given to Yaakov, who gave them to Louis, who gave them to Kohath, who would have given them to Amram, who would have given them to his children, Miriam, Aharon, and Moshe. So they would have been familiar with these writings more than anybody else. And the sheep went to the wolves, according to the word of Yahuwah, and another sheep met with it and went with it. And the two went and entered together into the assembly of those wolves and spake with them and admonished them not to touch the sheep from henceforth. And thereupon I saw the wolves and how they oppressed the sheep exceedingly with all their power. And the sheep cried aloud. And Yahuwah came to the sheep and they began to smite those wolves, and the wolves began to make lamentation. But the sheep became quiet, and forthwith ceased to cry out. And I saw the sheep till they departed from amongst the wolves. But the eyes of the wolves were blinded, and those wolves departed in pursuit of the sheep with all their power. And Yahuwah of the sheep went with them as their leader, and all his sheep followed him, and his face was dazzling and esteem and, and esteemed and terrible to look at, or sorry, terrible to behold. But the wolves began to pursue those sheep till they reached a sea of water. And that sea was divided and the water stood on this side and on that before their face. And there Yahuwah led them and placed himself between them and the wolves. One of the things that I believe it's in the Founded Earth Brothers. They have a video on the Red Sea crossing. And it's not a typical one, but they are familiar with Ron Wyatt and like the... Uh, the patterns of evidence, they have the newer videos that talk about it, but they, they actually found the spot where the cloud of the cloud of the witness and the flaming fire was standing in between the armies of Pharaoh and the children of Israel there. And it was so hot that there's like glass embedded all over the, the dirt around that area because it was melting it. So that's pretty amazing. And if I find that again, I'll share it with you, okay? It says, But the wolves began to pursue those sheep till they reached a sea of water. And that sea was divided. And the water stood on this side and on that before their face. And there Yahuwah led them and placed himself between them and the wolves. And those wolves did not yet see the sheep. They proceeded into the midst of that sea. And the wolves followed the sheep, and those wolves ran after them into that sea. And when they saw Yahuwah of the sheep, they turned and fled before his face. But the sea gathered itself together and became as it had been created. And the water swelled and rose till it covered those wolves. And I saw till all the wolves who pursued those sheep perished and were drowned. And you have both in <clears throat> the book of Yobelim and in what is called the wisdom of Shalomo or Solomon, Chokma Shalomo, you have the account of what happened. It says there was one, there was a thousand soldiers that were killed for every child that was thrown into the sea by Pharaoh's command as his punishment against these people. It says, but the sheep escaped from that water and went forth into a wilderness where there was no water and no grass, and they began to open their eyes and to see. And I saw Yahuwah of the sheep pasturing them and giving them water and grass, 
and that sheep going and leading them. And that sheep ascended to the summit of that lofty rock, and Yahuwah of the sheep sent it to them. <clears throat> Talking about the rock where the waters came from, or Mount Sinai. Either or could be spoken of right there. But I'm sure all of you are following along pretty well, right? So verse 30. And after that, I saw Yahuwah of the sheep who stood before them. And his appearance was great and terrible and majestic. And all those sheep saw him and were afraid before his face meaning they, they saw the call, the mountain burning with fire and the, the smoke and the lightning. They heard his voice and they were terrified, right? And they all feared and trembled because of him. And they cried to that sheep with them, which was amongst them. We are not able to stand before our master or Yahuwah or to behold him. And that sheep which led them again ascended to the summit of that rock but the sheep began to be blinded and to wander from the way which he had showed them. But that sheep was not thereof. I don't know what that word's supposed to be. I'm sorry. I'll have to look that up later. And Yahuwah of the sheep was wrathful exceedingly against them. And that sheep discovered it and went down from the summit of the rock and came to the sheep and found the greatest part of them blinded and fallen away. And when they saw it, they feared and trembled at its presence and desired to return to their folds. And that sheep took another sheep with it and came to those sheep which had fallen away and began to slay them. And the sheep feared its presence, and thus that sheep brought back those sheep that had fallen away, and they returned to their folds. Now after Moshe came down and broke the tablets, he said, Everyone for Yahuwah to me, and Louhi repented. And then they went through with the sword after he had ground up the idol and had it burn and, and threw it, the dust into the waters. And then the people drank just like in i believe it's numbers you have the instructions for what happens if a man becomes jealous of his wife and he has he brings her before the kohen they recite the curse they scrape off the the curse into the bitter waters and then she recites that she's been trustworthy and drinks it and if she's telling the truth nothing happens that's harmful and she's gifted with the child because the children are the reward from yahuwah and she was trustworthy to her husband and is rewarded with children for that sake. But if she has been an adulteress and she had lied about her not doing so, her belly would swell, her thigh would wither, and everyone would know that she would be known and cast off by the assembly. In the same way here, when the people were committing spiritual adultery, they went through and had to drink the bitter waters there. And then Louis went through and most likely everyone that had been committing idolatry couldn't get away from the sword. But it says, and I saw in this vision till that sheep became a man and built a house for Yahuwah of the sheep and placed all the sheep in that house. Meaning he made the added bonds, the tent of the witness and how everything was supposed to be kept for them and had that established after the fall, right? And I saw tell this sheep, which had met that sheep, which led them fell asleep, meaning Aharon passed away, right? And I saw till all the great sheep perished, and little ones arose in their place, and they came to a pasture and reproached a stream of water. Then that sheep, their leader, which had become a man, withdrew from them and fell asleep. And all the sheep sought it and cried over it with a great crying. That would have been Moshe's passing. And I saw till they left off crying for that sheep and crossed that stream of water. 
And there arose two sheep as leaders in the place of those which had led them and fallen asleep, or literally had fallen asleep and led them, meaning two leaders to replace Aharon and Moshe, which would have been Eleazar, Aharon's son is the Kohen, and Yahushua, the mm -hmm. leader from the tribe of Ephraim that was replaced, that took over after Moshe. And I saw till the sheep came to a goodly place and a pleasant and esteemed land. And I saw till those sheep were satisfied and that house stood amongst them in the, the pleasant land. And now this is from the time of judges till the building of the Hekel, right? And sometimes their eyes were opened and sometimes blinded till another sheep arose and led them and brought them all back and their eyes were opened. And the dogs and the foxes and the wild boars began to devour those sheep till, the, till Yahuwah, or the master of the sheep, raised up another sheep, a ram from their midst, which led them. And that would have been the different judges from time to time. Right? And that ram began to butt on either side, those dogs, foxes, and wild boars, till he had destroyed them all. And that sheep whose eyes were opened saw that ram, which was amongst the sheep, till it forsook its esteem and, be and began to butt those sheep. Now, this is speaking of Shaul, if you hadn't realized. Sorry about that the ram that was leading and fighting off all the enemies was the king that they asked for themselves. And he was helping them until he started fighting with them. And then you can see that again um, when he's fighting with the other ram, which is Dawid here. It says, And that sheep whose eyes were opened saw that ram, which was amongst the sheep, till it forsook its esteem and began to butt those sheep and trampled upon them and behaved itself unseemly. And Yahuwah, or the master of the sheep, sent the lamb to another lamb, sent Shemuel to Dawid, and raised it to being a ram and leader of the sheep instead of that ram which had forsaken its esteem. And it went to it and spake to it alone and raised it to being a ram, and made it prince and leader of the sheep. But during all these things, those dogs oppressed the sheep, which the dogs are the Philistines. If you remember, it was um, Goliath says, what am I, a dog that you come to me with a boy and sticks? Or Right? This is, and the first ram pursued that second ram, and that second ram rose and fled before it. And I saw till those dogs pulled down the first ram. So Shaul pursued Dawid, who was not fighting him because he was the Mashiach or anointed of Yahuwah, right? But he was eventually taken out by the Philistines. And that second ram arose and led the little sheep. And those sheep grew and multiplied. But all the dogs and foxes and wild boars feared and fled before it. And that ram butted and killed the wild beasts. And those wild beasts had no longer any power among the sheep and robbed them no more of aught. And that ram begat many sheep and fell asleep. And a little sheep became ram in its stead and became prince and leader of those sheep. And that house became great and broad. Uh, this is Shalomo coming to power, right? And that house became great and broad, and it was built for those sheep. A tower lofty and great was built on the house for Yahuwah of the sheep. And that house was low, but the tower was elevated and lofty. And Yahuwah of the sheep stood on that tower, 
and they offered a full table before him. And again, I saw those sheep that they again erred and went many ways, and forsook that their house. And Yahuwah of the sheep called some from amongst the sheep, and sent them to the sheep. But the sheep began to slay them. And one of them was delivered and was not slain. And it sped away and cried aloud over the sheep, and they sought to slay it. But Yahuwah of the sheep saved it or delivered it from the sheep and brought it up to me and caused it to dwell there. And this is speaking of Eliyahu, where he was taken up in a chariot of fire and he was actually brought to paradise to, with Hanok, which is what he's mentioning right here. So in, it, there's another witness of this in the Apostolic Constitutions, in the five books against heresies by Irenaeus, and in what's called the Recognitions of Clement, where those, you also see it in 2nd Baruch and 4th Ezra, but those that are like them, like Hanok, Eliyahu, Baruch, and Ezra, that please our maker and turn from evil and don't continue in sin, and they follow him perfectly, he takes them to paradise where they're, they're still alive today. And many other sheep he sent to those sheep to testify unto them and lament over them. And after that, I saw that when they forsook the house of Yahuwah and his tower, they fell away entirely, and their eyes were blinded. And I saw Yahuwah of the sheep, how he wrought much slaughter amongst them in their herds, until those sheep invited that slaughter and betrayed his place. <clears throat> mean they invited the people that would come and conquer them, like they did with... Um, the Romans were invited in. It wasn't Caesar. It was he was in a tri a trifecta with with um, it was Julius Caesar, Mark Antony, and not Ptolemy, but there was another Pompey. Pompey was a third of the the three leaders that they had at one time, and it was Pompey that had came in at the invitation of the sons of the Maccabees that were fighting amongst themselves. Or who would take over the reign, right? And that's when they became a tributary to Rome. They also openly invited in Antiochus Epiphans when he brought his slaughter, when they were trying to Hellenize all of their people. And you can read that in the first through five Maccabees and whatnot. So verse 55. Says, and he gave them over into the hands of the lions and tigers and wolves and hyenas and into the hand of the foxes and to all the wild beasts. And those wild beasts began to tear in pieces those sheep. And I saw that he forsook that their house and their tower and gave them all into the hand of the lions. <clears throat> to tear and devour them into the hand of all the wild beasts. And I began to cry aloud with all my power and to appeal to Yahuwah of the sheep and to represent to him in regard to the sheep that they were devoured by all the wild beasts. And that word in the Latin there was selvin, right? Sylvester who was the um, he was the bishop of Rome that went to Constantine in 312 was it or 314 and he came on a white horse and he was crowned by him as Pontifus Maximus it was literally the second fulfillment of the white horse rider in the sign of from the Shamayim the first being when Vaspasian was coming to power a few hundred years before. This is, but he remained unmoved, though he saw it, and rejoiced that they were devoured and swallowed and robbed, and left them 
to be devoured in the hand of all the beasts because he's not partial to any and we each get what we deserve, right? A man reaps what he sows. And he called 70 shepherds and cast those sheep to them that they might pasture them. And he spake to the shepherds and their companions, let each individual of you pasture the sheep henceforward, and everything that I shall command you, that you that you do. And I will deliver them over unto you duly numbered, and tell you which of them are to be destroyed, and them destroy you. And he gave over unto them those sheep. Now, for after the captivity and after they were taken into Babylon, he put, he had rulers and leaders over the people to the number of 70, apparently. And during this time, he had his instructions for who was supposed to live and who was supposed to die, who was supposed to be punished and who was not. And it's always based on his word. Those that were living in conformity to his word were, were to be protected, and those who were not were not to be. While this was going on, these judges were not judging rightly. The people that were leaders over them were not doing what they should, and you can see there was excess amount of them destroyed, but that will be, the shepherds will be given an account to that. It's not, it's not something that uh, everyone's going to be punished for, but those that were in positions of leadership that should have known to do better and chose not to. And he called another and spake unto him, Observe and mark everything that the shepherds will do to those sheep, for they will destroy more of them than I have commanded them. And every excess and the destruction which will be wrought through the shepherds record, namely, how many they destroy according to my command, and how many, according to their own carapace, record against every individual shepherd all the destruction he effects. And read out before me by number how many they destroy, and how many they deliver over for destruction, that I may have this as a testimony against them, and know every deed of the shepherds, that I may comprehend and see what they do, whether or not they abide by my command, which I have commanded them. But they shall not know it, and you shall not declare it to them, nor admonish them, but only record against each individual all the destruction which the shepherds effect each in his time, and lay it all before me. And I saw till those shepherd or shepherds pastured in their season, and they began to slay and to destroy more than they were bidden. And they delivered those sheep into the hand of the lions. And the lions and tigers ate and devoured the greater part of those sheep. And the wild boars ate along with them, and they burnt that tower and demolished that house. And I became exceedingly sorrowful over that tower because that house of the sheep was demolished. And afterwards I was unable to see if those sheep entered that house. And the shepherds and their associates delivered over those sheep to all the wild beasts to devour them, and each one of them received in his time a definite number. It was written by the other in a book how many each one of them destroyed of them. And each one slew and destroyed many more than was prescribed. And I began to weep and lament on account of those sheep. And thus in the vision I saw that one who wrote 
how he wrote down every one that was destroyed by those shepherds day by day and carried up and laid down and showed actually the whole book to Yahuwah of the sheep, everything that had been done and all that each one of them had made away with and all that they had given over to destruction. And the book was read before Yahuwah of the sheep, and he took the book from his hand and read it and sealed it and laid it down. And forthwith I saw how the shepherds pastured for twelve hours. And behold, three of those sheep turned back and came and entered and began to build up all that had fallen down of that house. But the wild boars tried to hinder them, but they were not able. Now the three would have been Zerubbabel, Nehemiah, and um, was it Shealtiel? Or no, that was the father who was in Babylon. I think there was one other, and then later on it will mention Ezra. But these are the 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 people after the return, right? It says, and they began to, again, sorry, to build as before, and they reared up that tower, and it was named the High Tower. And they began again to place a table before the tower, but all the bread on it was polluted and not pure. And as touching all this, the eyes of those sheep were blinded, so that they saw not. And their shepherds likewise and they delivered them in large numbers to their shepherds for destruction. And they trampled the sheep with their feet and devoured them. And Yahuwah of the sheep remained unmoved till all the sheep were dispersed over the field and mingled with them, i.e. the beasts. And they, i.e. the shepherds, did not save them out of the hand of the beasts. And this one who wrote the book carried it up and showed it and read it before Yahuwah of the sheep and implored him on their account and besought him on their account as he showed him all the doings of the shepherds and gave testimony before him against all the shepherds. And he took the actual book and laid it down beside him and departed. Now, during the captivity from Babylon, the northern kingdom was also in captivity, and pretty much everyone was spreading out and moving. Some of them were shifting and leaving the boundaries of where they were. Some of them were making their own city-states and kingdoms and powers to be later on. What would become the Parthian Empire or the Scythians was a force to be reckoned with and growing at this time. They would have already... They were taken into captivity around the 720s BC, and then by 600, they were mercenaries that helped Babylon whittle away and wipe out the Assyrians that had conquered them. And then after that, in the 500s here, they were they were also mercenaries and spread around, but they were, they were a pretty powerful force in what we call Ukraine today. They had already been in the Middle East all the way to Egypt and controlling that area for about 28 years at one point, and then they would have left and went back to their their own place for in the north for a while. But they were mercenary, and they were called the, the horse lords, if you will, from southern Russia to India and from the Middle East to China. They were spread out. All right, chapter 90, we see it talks about the third period. It says it's from Alexander the Great to the Greco-Syrian domination. And I saw till that in this manner, 35 shepherds undertook their pastoring of the sheep, and they severally completed their periods as did the first, and others received them into their hands to pasture them for their period each shepherd in his own period. And after that I saw in my vision all the birds of Shemaim coming, 
the eagles, the vultures, the kites, the ravens, but the eagles led all the birds, and they began to devour those sheep and to pick out their eyes and to devour their flesh. And the sheep cried out because their flesh was being devoured by the birds. And as for me, I looked and lamented in my sleep over that shepherd who pastured the sheep. And I saw until those sheep were devoured by the dogs and eagles and kites, and they left neither flesh nor skin nor sinew remaining on them till only their bones stood there. And their bones too fell to the earth and, and the sheep became few. And I saw until that 23 had undertaken the pasturing and completed their several periods 58 times, meaning the 35 and the 23 for a total of 58. <clears throat> it says, but behold, lambs were born by those white sheep, and they began to open their eyes and to see and to cry to the sheep. Yea, they cried to them, but they did not hearken to what they said to them, but were exceedingly deaf, and their eyes were exceedingly blinded. And I saw in the vision how the ravens flew upon those lambs, and took one of those lambs, and dashed the sheep in pieces, and devoured them. And I saw till horns grew upon those lambs, and the ravens cast down their horns, and I saw till there sprouted a great horn of one of those sheep, and their eyes were opened. And this would be the time of the Maccabees with the, the sons of Matith Yahu of Modin standing up with him and fighting back, and then him falling, and then Yahuda, and then from Yahuda it went to Yahu Nathan. And then from Yahu Nathan, it went to Shimon. And Shimon passed down the rulership or the reign, both being Kohen and king, if you will, to his children. And they were the, the sons of the Maccabees that were reigning until the time of Herod. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> It says, and it looked at them, and their eyes opened, and it cried to the sheep, and the rams saw it, and all ran to it. And notwithstanding all those, or and notwithstanding all this, those eagles and vultures and ravens and kites still kept tearing the sheep, and swooping down upon them and devouring them. Still the sheep remained silent, but the rams lamented and cried out. And those ravens fought and battled with it and sought to lay low its horn, but they had no power over it. And I saw till the shepherds and the eagles and those vultures and kites came, and they cried to the ravens that they should break the horn of that ram. And they battled and fought with it, and it battled with them and cried that its help might come. And I saw till that man who wrote down the names of the shepherds and carried up into the presence of Yahuwah of the sheep came and helped it and showed it everything. And he had come down for the help of that ram. And I saw till Yahuwah of the sheep came unto them in wrath and all who saw him fled and they all fell into his shadow before from before his face. All the eagles and vultures and ravens and kites were gathered together, and they came with them all the sheep of the field. Yea, they all came together and helped each other to break that horn of the ram. And I saw that man who wrote the book according to the command of Yahuwah, so it's saying that it repeats itself, but these are two different versions of the same thing, maybe. But it says, 
And I saw that man who wrote that book according to the command of Yahuwah till he opened that book concerning the destruction which those twelve last shepherds had wrought and showed that they had destroyed much more than their predecessors before the master of the sheep or Yahuwah of the sheep. And I saw till Yahuwah of the sheep came unto them and took in his hand the staff of his wrath, and smote the earth, and the earth clave asunder, and all the beasts and all the birds of the Shamayim fell from among those sheep, and were swallowed up in the earth, and it covered them. And I saw till a great sword was given to the sheep, and the sheep proceeded against all those beasts of the field to slay them, and all the beasts and the birds of the Shamayim fled before their face. It says, And I saw till a throne was erected in the pleasant land, and Yahuwah of the sheep sat himself thereon, and the other took the sealed books and opened those books before the master of the sheep. Sorry about that. And Yahuwah called those men the seven first white ones. So you can see, this is what I was meaning. You have the period of the Maccabees going on. You have the fights between Antiochus and the Maccabees and all the nations that were trying to, to thwart them. And then it goes right from there to the great white throne judgment. So we miss the advent of our Mashiach the first time, the setting up of the assemblies, the falling away in apostasy from the Nicolaitans, what would happen in the in the inter the space between them all the way to the second coming <clears throat> excuse me we don't have any of that actually enumerated right here but it should be so continuing it says and i saw till a throne was erected in the pleasant land and yahuwah of the sheep sat himself thereon and the other took the sealed books and opened those books before the master of the sheep. And Yahuwah called those men the seven first white ones and commanded that they should bring before him, beginning with the first star. So the chief messengers that are before him, he commanded to bring the first star which led the way. All the stars whose privy members were like those of horses and they brought them all before him. And he said to that man who wrote before him, being one of those seven white ones, and said unto him, Take those seventy shepherds to whom I delivered the sheep, and who, taking them on their own authority, slew more than I commanded them. And behold, they were all bound, I saw, and they all stood before him. And the judgment was held first over the stars, and they were judged and found guilty, and went to the place of condemnation, and they were cast into an abyss full of fire and flaming, and full of pillars of fire, what we call the lake of fire, right? And those seventy shepherds were judged and found guilty, and they were cast into the fiery abyss. And I saw that the time how a like abyss was opened in the midst of the earth, full of fire, and they brought those blinded sheep, and they were all judged and found guilty and cast into this fiery abyss, and they burned now this abyss was to the right of that house. And I saw those sheep burning and their bones burning. And I stood up to see till they folded up that old house and carried off all the pillars and all the beams and ornaments of the house were at the same time folded up with it. And they carried it off and laid it in a place in the south of the land. 
And I saw till the master of the sheep brought a new house greater and loftier than that first, and set it up in that place of the first which had been folded up. All its pillars were new, and its ornaments were new and larger than those of the first, the old one which he had taken away, and all the sheep were within it. So, the new creation, right? When the old creation will be burned up with fire and then the new creation put in place. And I saw all the sheep which had been left and all the beasts on the earth and all the birds of the Shemaim falling down and doing homage to those sheep and making petition to and obeying them in everything. Now, if you remember... When our Mashiach returns and he's coming with judgment and those of the first resurrection are made like the messengers and are part of the army that he now has like Yahushua when he brought the children into the land. Those that repent at that time, falling down and doing homage will be the ones that are serving his kings and Kohanim throughout the millennial reign. Those will be the ones that are still what you consider mortal during this time where they can still die, but life will be starting to extend where you can live upwards to a thousand years. That's going to be the time when the sinner dying at a hundred years is lightly esteemed, but the the child that dies at a hundred will be greatly mourned because it's not going to be considered natural by any means anymore. It says, and I saw all the sheep which had been left and all the beasts on the earth and all the birds of the Shamayim falling down and doing homage to those sheep and making petition to and obeying them in everything. And thereafter, those three who were clothed in white and had seized me by my hand, who had taken me up before and that hand, or sorry, and the hand of that ram also seizing hold of me. They took me up and set me down in the midst of those sheep before the judgment took place. And those sheep were all white, and their wool was abundant and clean. And all that had been destroyed and dispersed, and all the beasts of the field, and all the birds of the Shemaim assembled in that house, and the master of the sheep rejoiced with great joy because they were all good and had returned to his house. And I saw till they laid down that sword which had been given to the sheep, and they brought it back into the house, and it was sealed before the presence of Yahuwah, and all the sheep were invited into that house, but it held them not. And the eyes of them all were opened, and they saw the good, and there was not one among them that did not see. And I saw that that house was large and broad and very full. And I saw that a white bull was born. Excuse me. Sorry about that. Verse 35, and it says, And the eyes of them all were opened, and they saw the good, and there was not one among them that did not see. And I saw that that house was large and broad and very full. The new creation, right? And I saw that a white bull was born with large horns, and all the beasts of the field and all the birds of the air feared him, and made petition to him all the time. This would be the advent or the second coming of our Mashiach, who is the truth born in the world, right? And I saw till all their generations were transformed, and they all became white bulls, and the first among them became a lamb, and that lamb became a great animal and had great black horns on its head, and the master of the sheep rejoiced over it and over all the oxen. And I slept in their midst, and I awoke and saw everything. 
This is the vision which I saw while I slept. And I awoke and Baruch Yahuwah of righteousness and gave him esteem. Then I wept with a great weeping, and my tears stayed not till I could no longer endure it. When I saw, they flowed on account of what I had seen. For everything shall come and be fulfilled, and all the deeds of men in their order were shown to me. On that night I remembered the first dream, and because of it I wept and was troubled, because I had seen that vision. So he literally got to see the entirety of creation from the beginning of creation until the advent, the new creation, if you will. Although, again, we're missing that, that chunk in the middle there. But he was able to see all of that. And his first response after waking up was to, to cry until he couldn't anymore. Because of what men would do to themselves and the things that were coming upon us. So with that... I think that everyone, and that's where it mentions that with much wisdom comes much, or with much knowledge comes much grief, and with wisdom is sorrow. It mentions that in Ecclesiastes, right? But um, whenever you come to the truth, you can see how how far off so much of us are. And it's really like our Mashiach said, the, the way is broad, and most go towards the way of destruction, but the way to life is narrow and full of tribulation and hard pressed. And there are few who find it. So thank you all for your time. You have a wonderful Shabbat and we will see you next week. Shavuotov. Tov.